Good morning and welcome to this, the Palm Sunday video. Uh, this will be our last video of a series that's gone and extended for, oh my gosh, over two years now. Um, so at this service, um, I will do the readings um, and the prayers uh, that are usually said during Palm Sunday. Uh, the readings are intensive. We'll do the um, pa Passion according to St. Luke um, and start with that. I do have some other announcements. Um, next week, of course, uh, this week is uh, Holy Week. Um, we will have a Thursday night, uh, a Monday Thursday service at 7 o'clock and a Good Friday service also at 7 o'clock. Um, come and share the, the experience of Holy Week with this two services with us this week. Um, that will be great. There will be no Wednesday night activities this week. And on, on Easter, we will have an uh, 8.30 service, uh, traditional Holy Communion, and a 9.45 service, which will be with uh, children's uh, children service. Uh, it will also have communion, and then 11 o'clock service, uh, traditional uh, with Holy Communion. There's lots of musicians and lots of people preparing for Easter, um, and so we are excited to be able to celebrate it back in church um, with everybody, so we welcome everybody to come back. We will have a, a Sunday brunch. If you want to bring a casserole, please, there's a sign-up form on, on your door, as well as you can call the church office. If you want to donate flowers, uh, donate for flowers, uh, there is uh, a sign up on your door, or you can call us at the church office before Monday, please. Um, and there will be some activities on Easter morning. We'll have a brunch, and for the children, we will have, uh, uh, we, or for families, we'll have a photo, family photo booth like we did two years ago, uh, which was a really big hit. Um, and we will have uh, some children's activities, including. We, we wanted to do something like a Ukrainian Easter eggs that kids could do. Um, so we are doing, we have some plastic eggs that the kids get to paint. Um, and it is really cool. Um, so um, that's something we're gonna do. And we're gonna also have a pinata um, that was a hit the two years ago. So we'll be doing that. So there'll be a lot of excitement in between, um, I don't know, 10.30 and 11 o'clock with all the things going on. Um, but please come and join us for sure. This week, um, we will have a men's, prayer, a men's breakfast at Panera at 9 o'clock on Tuesday. If you haven't come, you are always welcome. Please come and join us. Um, it's just a bunch of guys um, chatting, and, and um, it's great fellowship, actually. Also, I want to mention that we are starting a new group for seniors called Holy Trinity Classics. And we have an outing that we're planning on uh, April 22nd to go to the Bavarian Inn for lunch. Um, we will leave here around 11 o'clock, carpool out to Shepherdsburg. If you want to participate in that, please let us know. Um, just call the church office. Um, we are gathering and putting carpools together as we speak. Um, and so that should be a fun activity. Um, so with that, we will begin our worship with the worship uh, of the word um, for Palm Sunday, where we meet, um, we usually meet in gathering area here at church, but we'll meet here in the back of the church. Um, but we'll start first, of course, with the children's sermon. Good morning, children. Today is Palm Sunday, and it's the beginning of Holy Week. And it's called Palm Sunday because we have palms. And um, what what we this signifies is that Jesus he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And people were so glad to see this prophet and this miracle worker and this person who's talking about God all the time, who comes into their town, that they're so happy to see him that they, they throw uh, palm branches out in front of him. They lay their coat down so that he wouldn't get any mud on his shoes. They just, want, you know, we call it the red carpet treatment. That's exactly what they gave Jesus on Palm Sunday the red carpet treatment. And so um, that's what we celebrate today. It's, it's uh, like a very important um, for us to realize that, that a lot of things happen. Jesus walked into Jerusalem with uh, being triumphant. And then as time went on, um, people changed. And um, the authorities uh, arrested Jesus and the people were told that Jesus wasn't good. Um, and so they, 
they hung him on a cross. And then, so we kind of go through what Jesus went through during this week to remember what happened to him and to remember what he did for us. Um, and then on Sunday, we have a whole different idea of what happened. And I'll leave that for Sunday. But this week's kind of a sad week. But it starts happy, but it ends kind of sad. Or, it, and, you know, the end of the week, of course, is Easter, and that's happy. But we go, through, we go through a tough time. So today, think about what Jesus has done for us. Think about what, uh, you know, how we honor Jesus with the palms, and we wave them, and we welcome Jesus into our lives um, because he is king, and he is good. So let us say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much as we begin Holy Week um, for all that you've done for us. And we help, we ask you to help us to pay attention to the love that you share with us and give us grace to share that love with others. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human hearts through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading of the... Palm Sunday Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went ahead going up to Jerusalem, and when he came near Bethpage, near Bethany, at the place they called Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So those were who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. And they were untying the colt. His owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord needs it. And then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they sat Jesus on it. And he rode along and people kept spreading their cloaks on the road as he was now approaching a path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. And he answered, I tell you, if they were silent, the stones themselves would start to shout out the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We praise and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On the day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed son of David and king of kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palms in his path. We ask that you bless these branches and those that we bear and those that bear them and grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King and follow him with perfect confidence through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and to the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is a beautiful reading from the book of Philippians um, that we hear and probably know pretty well. Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, that who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equity with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading of the Passion from the Gospel of St. Luke, starting in chapter 22. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. And they began to ask one another, which one of it of them could be the one who does this? And a dispute among them arose as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, the kingdom, the kings of the Gentile lords over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer to you, just as my Father has confirmed to me, a kingdom so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and that you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to shift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. And Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied me three times that you know me. And he said to them, when I send you out with a purse bag or sandals, did you lack anything? And they said, no, not a thing. And he said to them, but now the one who has a purse must take it and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, the scriptures must be fulfilled in me. And he was counting among the lawless, and the, indeed, what is written about me is fulfilled. And they said, Lord, look here at two swords, he replied. Is it enough? And he came out and went, as with his, sent, as his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. And when he reached the palace, when he reached the place, he said to them, pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them 
about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if, it is, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. And the angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. And in his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweet sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. And when he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief and said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. And while he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came and the one called Judas, the one of the 12, was leading them. And he approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, it is with a kiss that you betray the Son of Man. And when those were, who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of a high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police and the elders who had come for him, have you come with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day, day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following in a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was one with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else on seeing him said, you also was one or one of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know who, what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, a cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord and how he had said to him, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and went bitterly. Now the men were holding Jesus, began to mock him and beat him. And they also blindfolded him and kept asking him, prophesy, who is this that struck you? But they kept many others, they kept heaping many others insults on him. And when day came, they assembled all the elders of the people, both chief priests and the scribes gathered together and they brought him to council. And they said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. And he replied, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. And all of them asked, are you then the Son of God? And he said to them, you say that I am. Then they said, what further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the king or to the Jews, uh, to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. And Pilate asked him, Are you king of the Jews? And he answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and to the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, he stirs up the people by teaching them th throughout all Judea from Galilee where he, begin, where he began even to this place. And when Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Dr Jesus, he was very glad for he had been wanting to see him for a long time because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some signs. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. And the chief priests and the scribes stood by vehemently accusing him. And even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put his elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this day, they had been enemies. And Pilate then called together the chief priests and the leaders and the people and said to them, you brought me this man as one who is perverting the people, and here I am examining him in your presence, and I have found this man guilty of any, I have not found this man guilty of any charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will have him flogged and released him. 
Then they all shouted out together, away with this fellow, release Barabbas for us. Uh, this was a man who had been put in prison for insurrection and had taken place in the city and for murder. And Pilate wanted to release Jesus, address them again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And a third time they, he said to them, why, what evil has he done? I have found no ground for this sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave, him, gave his verdict that their demand should be granted and he released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder and handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Serene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beaten their breast and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. And then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and the hills cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place which they called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one at his right and one at his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing and they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching by as the leaders scoffed at him, saying, he saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, he is the chosen one. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals was were hanged there kept deriding him, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And we reply, Truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. And it was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land till three in the afternoon when the sun light faded and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus crying with a loud voice said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed this last. When the centurion heard that what has taken place, he praised God and said, certainly this man was innocent. And when the crowds who had gathered there for this special spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to the plan of action. And he came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. And this man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of the preparation of the Sabbath was beginning, and the woman who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid, and they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church called to follow 
Jesus in the way of the cross. Make us unflinching servants of the gospel. Deliver us from hardship as we confront the forces of injustice and practice radical compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the earth and all its inhabitants, created in love, train us to recognize your divine goodness in the world around us. Rouse in us a reverence for creation, that we take greater care of its resources. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those in position of authority called to lead with integrity and compassion, supply them with courage and vulnerability when challenges when challenged with new ideas. Deliver them from fear that limits imagination and impedes justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those who suffer, waiting expectantly for mercy and consolation, accompany those who feel abandoned or betrayed, defend those who are wrongly accused, and embrace those who are incarcerated or detained. Heal those who are ill, especially Juta Alberton, Jean and Kay DeMarc, Carl Gerber, Rich Sheets, Jamie Sims, Rick Tinney, Jen Ward, Ann Will, the Scott family, Carl Prout, Carol Prout, Danielle Sims, Deb Johnson, Sue Tinney, James Avery, John Shalak. The Albus family at the passing of their baby, Mia, family, Mia Fleming and, the fam and her family at the passing of her brother Matt, the family of Grace Landis at her passing, the people of Ukraine. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For Christians around the world preparing this week to journey with Jesus to the cross, reveal to us once again the earth shattering power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. Lead us all from death to life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And let us pray together the words of our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cast his eyes upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We care as friends. We love as family. We serve as Christ. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.